Wisconsin is a state known for its great beer. And behind every great beer is great brewing, great people, and great stories. On this show, we're going to be talking to the people that are responsible for making the beer that we love. We're here at Hopcat in Madison, and this is Behind the Brews. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, I'm Fred Swanson. With me, as always, is my buddy Mark Alfred. Last night we had a bit of a tussle about who was going to do today's opening. Mark remains attractive, but I won. We're here at the Vintage in Sauk Prairie. We're going to be talking with the Vintage crew about how innovative they are in beer, food, and design. They'll be telling us about this new location, as well as what's going on in the East Washington Avenue corridor in downtown Madison. Let's go in and have a beer and a conversation. Scott. You've got a history outside of brewing in the Midwest. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's true. I started brewing in 1997. So all of my brewing experience and training took place kind of on the West Coast and uh, Southwest. So Arizona, California, and Nevada. I'm a brewer completely by accident, but it's a happy, happy accident. It was a matter of my car breaking down in Tucson, Arizona. I was headed to LA with my fresh new film degree from UW Madison, because I thought that was going to take me places. And uh, really, uh, it did, because my Chevy Cavalier breaking down in the desert was one of the best things that ever happened. I was hooked, you know, so I spent the next three years in Tucson working my way up and um, don't regret it. Trent, are there any times that you have to rein Scott in on his far reaching thoughts and ideas about what he wants to do? <laughs> I don't, I try not to rein things in too much. Uh, Scott, as everybody knows, has a lot of uh, really great ideas and sometimes crazy ideas, but uh, Fortunately, we're very different, but we're also alike in the way in the way we think. Where a lot of times he'll say, "Hey, I got this idea," and I stop what I'm doing, like, "I want to hear it," and I do the same thing too. Or sometimes we'll have t uh, text back and forth at 10 o'clock at night when we both had a few pints at home, and that's where a lot of the really cool ideas have uh, have spawned from. So yeah, I don't do any raining when it comes to that. I know you always have a great lineup of beers. I've never had a bad beer from you. What drives Scott to choose what? It seems to be which what seems to be a phenomenal line of beers. Yeah, that goes um way back. I guess my initial love of beer really stems from from Germany. Junior year abroad with the university, and um, you know we had our couple hundred bucks worth of stipends that came back from the states. It went straight to the the beer shop. You know the choices. You know I was in the Rhineland. You'd think it's going to be all Pilsner and Alt and things like that, but they had everything. So it was like buy a new case of beer, get your friends, and go have fun. All the weird tangential beers that we uh, that we do in the um, vintage lineup. Even I'll start with the core of like make it a great damn beer first. You know. So that's one thing. What drives all the other stuff? It's, it's a number of things. You know, I, I love beer in a general sense. It's not necessarily I'm a hophead, not necessarily I gotta have malts. You know, I think I'm a seasonal drinker too. I'm almost happier to be back in Wisconsin than in the Southwest for that reason, because like we have to endure the seasons and enjoy the seasons and it's like highs and lows. So you get to brew beers that correlate with that. Here it's like, oh God, winter's coming. Oh God, brew something heavy. Imperial Stouts, get a barley wine on the way. So I love responding to um, the seasons that way. And so you gotta think, you know, six weeks or several months ahead as a brewer. And that's part of the fun, you know? This is just a big game where you're just putting fun things down and then weeks or months later, there it is. And people will tell you if they like it or not. So a lot of it comes, uh, you know, from internal inspiration, but a lot of it really comes from the public and just like, okay, this is a thing I hear. And I realized that Wisconsin, and especially maybe out here in Sauk, this is more multi-territory than it is hoppy territory. So if we seem like we're more of a malt angle rather than crazy hoppy, if you're gonna categorize us some way, I think that's because we're responding to the public. So do you think that long-term, you're going to continue to be restaurant-centric, or, or do you see yourself going a little bit onto distribution? You know, we enjoy the hospitality part of it. So selling it across the bar and engaging with, with our clientele and our guests, that's really important to us. Um, we do do a, a fair bit of wholesaling as well, but as of right now, this place in time, um, we're really enjoying the, the restaurants. Yeah, and we do have, um, you know, a canning line is on order, so we will have some packaged product um, available. Whether it's gonna move onto those crowded shelves or not, that's a thing I don't want to stake our entire business on. You know, I think it's going to be a great add-on. 
it's kind of like uh, if it does make its way onto a liquor store or um, some shelf out there, it's like a billboard for us. If people don't know we exist, turn the can around, enjoy the product and say like, whoa, this is a place I can go to and have a burger too. And we're going to try it out. And if it's not the thing that's 100% floating the boat, then that's fine. We're, we have uh, some, all of our spaces have to-go coolers. If someone's just, well, I had a pint, I got to drive, but sure would like to take a six pack home. There it is. There's still a lot of old school people out there that uh, growlers, what's that? I don't know, it's glass, and then I, I keep it, whatever. And then the big 32 ounce growlers, that's, if you're gonna share it with your buddy, what do you do? You pass it to him if there's no glass or, <laughs> You, you just know, drink it yourself. The 12 <laughs> ounce and the 16 <laughs> ounce cans, you throw them in a cooler and then it's a free for all. So we're excited about that. Guys, thanks so much for sitting down with us for a few beers. We're going to catch up now with uh, Brittany and Michael. Thanks again. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Thank you. Brittany and Mike, tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do here at Vintage. Well, I started at the Vintage Downtown when I was 19 as a cook. They uh, opened up the place on the west side and they said, hey, you know, we're having a partner up with you. And I mean, I couldn't turn that down. It was, I was, it was a dream come true. My job title is a little bit of everything. I do the decorating, help with marketing, help with banquets, help with management, um, really just dive in wherever I'm needed. The vintage feels and looks different than almost anywhere in Madison in a lot of places in the Midwest. There's an intentionality to that. Is that a team decision or is that all Brittany? No, it's definitely a team decision. I think we all, um, want that same feel and that same idea and that same concept. Um, I just execute it and I'm really fortunate that the team has faith in me so I can kind of have my freedom to do it and it all comes together. So tell us what we can look forward to at the new Tangent location. What's new, what's different, what's exciting for you guys? For the most part, it kind of has three different areas and three different feels um, and it kind of goes um, hand in hand with music. So we kind of have a jazz era, we have a kind of rock era and then more of a gothic grunge era. So um, it's going to be really exciting. Tell us a little bit about the tap line room. Is something unique to this location? This place is a lot bigger than capacity wise than our Whitney Way location as far as brewing. I mean, we have a 10 barrel system on the west side and it's been, you know, it's got us along so far, especially with Scott cranking along. I can't believe how many beers he's putting out of that. But with this place having a 30 barrel system, I'm excited to see how many more beers he's going to be putting out. And the cooler is really sexy. We've actually had a couple of bride and grooms get their photo taken in the keg cooler, which I think is great. Michael and Brittany, thanks for hanging out with us today, having a beer and talking a little bit. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to all the viewers for watching. This is episode six. We'll see you at episode seven. Make sure you check out isthmus.com backslash behind the brews. Cheers. 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 Cheers.